Biobalance HealthCast episode 157, treating hormonal imbalance with bioidentical hormones. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, medical director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. If you've watched these before, or even if you haven't, one of the things that you'll notice is that there's always an invitation, if you have questions or comments, to contact us at drkathymoppin.com. And so people do, and they make comments about the podcast that they've seen, or they ask questions that they have that arise out of the podcast that they've seen. And today, we want to take some time in this podcast to respond to a comment uh, that we received recently in the podcast that we did entitled Side Effects of Estrogen Replacement Part 1. We did two of those, and this was in response to the first one. I want to read what the commentator has written and then Kathy will give her response which is also posted on the website if you want to go and read it yourself. Uh, but we, we chose this because it, it, it's a delicate balance of responding to an individual's concern when you're not providing medical information to that individual. Uh, Kathy doesn't see this person, she doesn't come to Kathy's office, doesn't have a doctor-patient relationship, and yet the questions that she raises are sort of global questions. And so Kathy is, is going to try to give her some information that she can then go to her own physician and, and speak to with the information that Kathy mm -hmm. has to offer. So l let's share the comment and then we can talk about mm -hmm. the response. The comment is, I am so happy to have finally found you uh, and your breakdown of the symptoms of the lack of each hormone as well as the side effects. I have been struggling with trying to find hormonal balance for over 11 years now. I am postmenopausal and had a partial hysterectomy 18 years ago. My ovaries went to sleep after the partial and never woke up again. I've tried every form of estrogen on the market and compounded testosterone cream. Nothing completely relieved my symptoms. I was placed on Xanax several years ago because I was told that I have an anxiety disorder. I don't buy that because I've never had issues with anxiety or the jitters until I started using estrogen replacement. I also tried progesterone in different forms and experienced the worst symptoms ever. I recently started pellet therapy, but am still a long way from feeling balanced. I will be getting my second set of pellets next week, and I am watching all of your videos trying to determine if I need more or less estrogen and testosterone. I'm not sure how much longer I can fight the battle of not knowing how I'm going to feel from one day to the next. I haven't enjoyed life in a very long time, and prefer not to even leave the house. My friends and family seem to feel that I'm mentally ill or depressed because they have witnessed my transformation from an extremely outgoing person to a recluse. I am not mentally ill. I know that my problems are due to not being able to find balance. I am hoping to learn from your knowledge how I can best describe my symptoms for my doctor to help him determine what dose of pellets I need to finally feel normal again. Thank you so much for taking the time to provide the in-depth information that menopausal women need to have. She explains and asks for many of the same things my patients come to me with. Mm -hmm. So this is a very common situation. Not the 11 years, that's a very long time to go without hormones. Mm -hmm. But she's, she's not typical, but she is, I see this commonly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first question really is, or the first statement is that she is feeling somewhat better on pellets and nothing else worked, which I see all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many people say, oh, I failed hormones because they just didn't try the pellet therapy, which is the most rev revolutionary and the most completely healing therapy that there is in hormone therapy. Well, what Kathy's talking about is there are multiple ways to deliver the product, whether it's sublingual tablets, whether it's creams, creams gels that you rub on your skin, uh, pills that you take, that, and they all have uh, issues that pellets don't have. And they don't bring you back to complete health. Because of those issues. Because of yeah. those issues and how they're given and mm -hmm. that your levels go up and down every day where pellets your levels go up and down every four months. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge thing for mood. So what I would say to her if she came to my office, first of all, I'd have a lot more information. I'd have her health history, I'd have her family history, I'd have every symptom that she's had. Uh, I would know if any of those symptoms got better on the first dose, 
So I would be able to say, is this symptom better? Is this symptom better? Is this? And I know which ones are estrogen, and you do too, because you watch the estrogen, um, the estrogen symptoms and the estrogen side effects podcast that mm -hmm. we did. So I think the first thing you need to do is think about, is your estrogen enough or is it too much? If all your symptoms of hot flashes, dry vagina, and uh, night sweats have gone away, if, you're, if your skin is a little bit more moist, uh, then that means that your estrogen is, is better. If it's too much, then oftentimes you'll have too much vaginal wetness, not some people say that's impossible, but too much vaginal wetness, your breasts will hurt, your breasts will enlarge. Mm -hmm. So that's over the top. So to determine if the estrogen pellet gave you enough estradiol, first of all, I look at symptoms and, and weigh those two things and ask my patient that. And then I look at her level. And some people feel great blood level at 60. And some people feel great at 200. You know, I, I'm glad you said it the way that you said it because that's something, if anybody's familiar with these podcasts, that you talk about all the time. You, you can't just go by lab level data. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of doctors, because of, of time crunches and not being able to spend the time with the patient, seem to find that to be the, the most salient or most pertinent mm -hmm. data that they can access. But you spend time with your patients talking about symptom management and symptom relief. Mm -hmm. And so you can identify the specific symptoms. Are your breasts swollen and tender? Uh, do you suffer mm -hmm. from painful dry vagina uh, issues? Uh, do you have night sweats or cold chills or mm -hmm. whatever it might be? And then you measure the degree of improvement. Uh, or lack of it. That's what we do and, on our and second you, and you play with visit. the dosage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we adjust dosage depending on the symptoms mostly and the right. numbers because everyone has a perfect estrogen level. Mm -hmm. And my minimum for throughout Every individual practice. individual has one for them. them. There's not for, a standard for all women. No, there's a huge range for okay. all women. All right. And and my my range for people having symptoms of estrogen deprivation mm -hmm. is 60 okay. picograms per deciliter. So 60 is the lowest right. and I don't like to keep have anybody over 250. Mm -hmm. What that does is it saturates all up uh, both your uh, receptor sites mm -hmm. and your liver and your liver can't clear it. All right so so a range of between 60 and 250. Uh, That's huge. It's huge. And the dosage variables are determined by the, the genetic history of the woman, the physiology, the size, the weight, the life conditions, the diet and nutrition, mm -hmm. the exercise balance. All those things are uniquely individualized. Right. And That's so right. the challenge for mm -hmm. the physician and the patient is to, to find the dosage level that brings the best symptom relief for the least intervention. Right. So where does that line? So I is? start low. Yes. So I start low on estrogen. So if if I have somebody who I think needs 60 to 90, mm -hmm. then I'm going to start with 25 milligram pellet. If I think somebody needs just barely 60 or I don't want to give them much estrogen because they have a fibroid, they have, see, I don't know all of these things about this right. patient. So right. I, I adjust it for, do they have uterine bleeding? Do they have a large uterus? Are there fibroids? Do they have uh, breast cysts? Do, and do, and these are all... Several <laughs> cycles or is that, you know, one or two times around you kind of get a pretty good mix? Or? Usually, usually in the uncomplicated patient, mm -hmm. it t I usually get it right after the first four months and I look at symptoms and I, and I can look at lab, mm -hmm. then I usually get a maintenance dose. Mm -hmm. In somebody who's really complicated, I have to draw blood again and then look at it at eight, at eight months. Right. And then I have to tweak it a little bit. So it may take eight months to get somebody well treated with estrogen and testosterone. But the next thing is that I found, I just came back from a conference in Las Vegas on, from Age Management Medical Group, and I noticed that everybody was well agreed on the big range of estrogen and to, to get to a range that made the patient feel better. Mm -hmm. They were not agreed on testosterone. And most of these guys and gals are afraid to give testosterone. So instead of giving and, and they advise to give so little testosterone. The next thing is, what does testosterone do bad to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's a pellet, it doesn't cause anger, it doesn't cause 
it doesn't cause bulking road up. rage you don't end up yeah. being, you don't end up being the hulk none yeah. of those things because it's a time release mm -hmm. so it may be that they're afraid of it because of the the way they give it because they don't all give pellets mm -hmm. but we don't we don't have that issue so we start at a, at a dose that is going to make a difference mm -hmm. and that dose is generally 150 milligrams at the very lowest somebody says i just want one one 100 pellet i'm like your choice but you're not going to feel better mm -hmm. and it's true they don't mm -hmm. they come back and go oh i wish i would have done 150 because they're afraid of it but they just don't feel better so what's the source of the fear do you know for the doctors for the patients <laughs> is it roid rage is it uh i guess over I, masculinity uh well it could be it could be over masculinity they don't want to cause that mm -hmm. but it also could be that it's a kind of a new thought to give for them, not for me, to mm -hmm. give testosterone to women. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid of anything we're afraid of, we, we go really low on, you know? Oh, we'll just give you a little. Well, we don't do that with insulin. We don't do that with diabetes. We don't do that with any other thing that we consider right. a problem or a lack of. We treat so that people are at the optimal level. Mm -hmm. We don't treat so that they're at the lowest, but with testosterone, they're so afraid. So instead of giving, 150 milligrams there are people out there giving 75 and granted that's better than nothing mm -hmm. but it doesn't make you feel normal well and, and as you listen to Kathy what I, I hope you see her passion and her information base and the message that I'm getting is that a lot of physicians who are into this kind of medicine are still reluctant to provide the testosterone and especially to provide it for women and Kathy has been doing this for a long time and has actually written a book the secret female hormone uh, which is testosterone that will be published by Hay House in March of this coming year 2014 so what we're hoping is that when that book comes out more women and their physicians will read it and become convinced because of the things the the information and the arguments that, that Kathy uh, posits in the book will give them the information they need not to be afraid and to be more comfortable with mm -hmm. giving women dosages of testosterone that are in the range that will alleviate their symptoms. Interestingly enough, they don't do that with men. Right. At this, even with this conference of experts, oh, men could use a whole lot more. It doesn't matter if you go over the normal range. Right. Men might need that if they need that to feel better. Mm -hmm. That and to be see, they have this. They have a thermometer. They've got sexual ability as their thermometer, and we don't. Right. We have sexual desire as a thermometer, but nobody listens to that. Mm -hmm. But if it works, you know, if they have penile function, it works. Mm -hmm. And they can say, oh, it's working now, so maybe they need a level of 1,200. Mm -hmm. And that's when they, they say, oh, that's your optimal level, you're going to stay there. Right. But they aren't afraid of that right. for, for some reason, for yeah. men. But when we say we want to have a level, a free, free testosterone level of 20, then that is a little over what you would have when you were younger, but mm -hmm. You've lost a lot of receptor sites, mm -hmm. and so and estrogen competes for receptor sites. So we have to actually give a, more than you would have as a young person. But that makes everything work. Mm -hmm. And some some of these men who are getting twelve hundred have never had a twelve who are achieving twelve hundred have never had a twelve hundred before. Right. But they feel better because age has taken away some of has blunted some of their ability to have sexual uh, prowess. But they. They need to have, they want that back. Well, well so and, do we. <laughs> so we want that back too. So there's nothing that testosterone is going to do to us except facial hair. Mm -hmm. And we manage that. Some people get voice changes. And the only people that really generally notice that are people who have had a voice injury before. Mm -hmm. Or somebody who is a singer. And those things, that's why we have to know what you do for a living. Right. We have to know your past history. Well, then you have to have a conversation about trade-offs. You know, right. you might get... A moderate, you know, half octave change in your voice timber, uh, but in response to that, or in return for that, you get your libido back, mm -hmm. or you get your sense of well-being back, or you get your ability to be alert and alive and have good memory mm -hmm. and, and fight off other illnesses of aging like osteoporosis, uh, or you can keep your voice modulated the way that it is and develop mm -hmm. all these things. I haven't had too much trouble with that, except in patients who have had voice injuries in the past mm -hmm. or who have reflux. And we, many women have reflux acid because reflux, of ch acid talking. reflux, mm -hmm. childbearing. Mm -hmm. So acid reflux doesn't go away, and it, it is a progressive thing, and it damages the vocal cords. Sometimes, 
<laughs> when you get testosterone and estrogen, everything becomes a problem with testosterone and estrogen. If you get that, everybody says, oh, I got a virus. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after I had my pellets, is that it? No, that's yeah. not it. <laughs> yeah. You know, so reflux is not from the pellets either. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, it list, we have it listed on our website. We have it in the book. What does come from testosterone and what doesn't? Mm -hmm. And when you look at women and testosterone, having facial hair that we can prevent with two, medi two different medications, two options, is really a good thing. I mean, we can, we can stop it. So you don't have to deal with that. And if you don't want to take the meds, the girls can get lasered or they can get waxed. Well, and if you don't have time to go to the website and read all of the research that's listed there, you can check uh, at drkathymoppin.com and there's a list of all the different podcasts. And mm -hmm. we've done three or four podcasts on the risks and the side effects, the benefit uh, ratios for testosterone. So it'll all be enumerated and listed for you there. Just, just watch the podcast. There's one other thing I want to say to right. our... Um, email uh, donor. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a relationship. I don't know what your labs look like, but your doctor should be checking your estrone level and estrone and your cortisol level. Those are the two most important hormones that when they're elevated, even if you have a good level of testosterone, it can totally blunt the effects. It can block them. It's like football and the blocker stands there and doesn't get through. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking cortisol or if you have a high cortisol level from stress, then that, ha that has to either have a replacement type drug or you need to have your uh, cortisol blunted or shut down or not shut down, but quieted with a horm like endodrine, which is a an animal adrenal, a tiny little bit that just kind of shuts down the overproduction of cortisol. Then you'll feel the testosterone. If estrone is elevated, then estrone gives you breast tender tenderness. And we've talked about estrone before. It comes from the adrenal gland and from fat. And basically, it has to be blocked. So we use a Rimidex in our pellets, or we use a Rimidex orally, or we use DIM, or we use both DIM and a Rimidex. So. Estrone is something that can make you feel like you're not getting the, pel the effects of the pellets. And that's something that we attend to all the time. And if you're, you know, your doctor hasn't gotten that kind of training, then um, he can look, I guess he can look it up. Or he can listen to the podcast as well. Or he can contact you for information. Or he can contact me. That's right. So it's, I'm not being cutting. We all have our own our own experience right. and I had a very important and a very self-centered reason for finding this mm -hmm. because I wasn't going to be able to live, be productive, do anything, right. uh, have a family uh, or take care of one if I didn't have my hormones taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so that made me do this. Not every doctor has that motivation. Right, and that's a story she tells in the book as well. And, and so. Uh, I guess to, to close, uh, thank you for the comment and the participation in the in the larger uh, communication community. But we would invite all of you who have questions or comments to get in touch with us. We would like to have that dialogue. Uh, be an active participant in your own health care. Become informed. Get information. Uh, and keep your eyes open for the secret female hormones coming out in March. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.